we'll model rectangular precast columns onto the footings that we just placed. So let's go ahead and continue. Okay, so we're making really good progress here. Um, so the next thing I like to do is when working with uh, this precast material is I like to change the way my uh, graphic display looks. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of color to our view. It's going to help me um, really make sense of what's going on. A lot of black and white lines and reference lines and reference planes that we set can make things a little bit confusing. So having a nice graphic display really makes things a little bit easier to read. So once I have that change made, uh, we can go ahead and jump into placing our columns. So there's a couple of ways you can work with precast concrete structures. So I'm going to jump to our floor plan here really quick. And let's go hunt down a couple of columns. And I'm going to show you just how this can work. So we're going to go to structural, and we're going to go with column, and we're going to load family. And I'm looking for structural columns here. And we have a couple of options here. And of course, we're focusing on precast concrete. So I'm going to select that one. So we'll start here at the top. You can notice Revit supplies us with a number of uh, precast columns here. So there's a lot of ways you can use these pieces. We're going to focus our attention on working with uh, columns with the corbels. Um, initially, uh, when setting some uh, precast structure up, you can use this really simple rectangular column with corbels. So if you're doing something one level, very easy to use. But if, you're, if your uh, structure is multi-level or has a lot of different things going on, or maybe some shifts in elevation, maybe the slab moves in some really unique ways because of ramps, it can get really, really confusing and really corbel intensive. Um, so I find it a lot easier instead of going with this and then trying to adjust all my parameters within this uh, family folder here, I'm going to keep it simple. And I'm going to go with this precast square column. And then later on, we'll go back in and add our corbels exactly where we want them. That way, we're not worrying about having to change what's in there and getting lost and confused with all those corbels associated with our design. So let's go ahead and select this precast column. I'm going to open, and we're going to make sure we change in our uh, options bar here from depth to height. Um, this will make sure that when we're placing our columns, it's not going to go in the negative direction or down. It's not uh, Revit's not going to think we're trying to support the first floor. We're actually putting something on top of the first floor. So we'll set our height here, and I'm going to set that height. Well, for now, we'll actually bump this up. We're going to keep it one long continuous column throughout our entire design. So I'm going to move this up to 34 feet high. So once that's good, um, we've got our height set. I know the type of column we're going to place. We can start placing them here at our intersections. So now I have quite a bit of columns. So I mean, I can come in here and do 12 individual clicks, but I like to save time. So I'm simply going to click on that one. Or I'm going to go column again. And we're going to place our columns at the grids. And what we're going to do is we're going to select the grids uh, where we want these columns. So I'm simply going to select every line here. That way, at every intersection, our columns will get placed. And I don't have to do several clicks to get this accomplished here. Perfect. So I'm going to go finish. And like that, we automatically have columns in place. So let's jump to 3D view to make sure everything looks good. I want to make sure my columns are resting on top of my footings. My midpoints are lined up. Let's double check it in our, our elevations here. Things are definitely looking good. So now that we have our columns in place, we'll be ready for the next step in this process. And in the next lesson, we'll start placing some L-beams and some inverted T-beams.